In this video, we're going to start talking a little bit about memory forensics. So this is something that a lot of work has been done with recently. We created a memory image of our target system. And now we're going to show you how you can use volatility in order to examine that. Now on the Linux platform in particular, before you can do anything useful with volatility, you need to set up a profile. And the reason for this is that every version of Linux and every kernel version could be slightly different. In order to make sure that you have the exact right structures in volatility, you have to create this profile. So how is that done? That's done by compiling a specific program and creating a dwarf file and also getting the system map file and zipping that all together. So if this sounds complicated, it's because it is, but you're in luck. I've written a very simple shell script here that will help you out with this. So how does this work? You know, we have our standard shebang, bin bash, our usage, says this is for creating a volatility profile from a mounted image file. And what you do is you call it and you give it the path to the root of that image file. So if it's mounted at media part zero, that's what you would give it. And we'll see how this works in a little bit. I check to see, did you give me enough arguments? If you didn't give me enough arguments, I'm going to give you the usage statement. Here I store the current directory and then I change to the directory you passed me slash boot because in that boot directory I will have my system map file which will have as a suffix the version of the kernel. So to get that version I do an ls for system map star and I pipe that to sed, the scriptable editor, and I said sed please substitute system.map dash for nothing. In other words, please strip that off of my file name and the results from these commands are passed back and stored in ver. I then cd back to my old directory. I echo the version. Recall we've talked about this in previous videos. It's safer to put your variable name in the curly brackets. So that's what I've done here. I then get my current directory. I get my make command using which make and I store those in some environment variables. Here I cat what's on the next line until I get to EOF down here and I'm actually going to cat it not to the screen but to make file dot the version. And this is my make file that I've created in some simple rules. This I copied from the make file that was included with volatility. I just modified it slightly. I then call make on my file and I pass it explicitly this make file. So I explicitly pass in a make file name using dash f. If you don't, make will expect a file simply called makefile with a capital M. Then I will copy the system map file. So I will copy again from the boot directory of my target system map dash ver to the current directory and then I have to zip it up. So I zip it up into a file called Linux then the version dot zip and what do I put in there? Module dwarf and system map dash version. Once I've done that, you can use this in volatility. For now, let me go ahead and run this. So first, I need to mount my image. So I'll call sudo mount image pi on our favorite image. Here, I will run mount on my image file, ask me for password, and sure enough, here I go. It pulled up and it mounted to media part zero. So now I will change to my new directory here and I will run create profile and I will tell it here's where you can get my stuff, media part zero. And sure enough, it's done. Here you can see my newly created file for my image. It was running a 3.16.0-30 kernel. So now that our profile has been built. We'll go ahead and copy it to the appropriate directory. 
And now if we have a look in that directory, we see two profiles. Here is a profile that we just built. And here is another profile for my current Ubuntu system. And that's all you have to do. That's all for this video.